Welcome to Magical Aspirations, a podcast for magical people where we aspire to gather all of the knowledge magic has to offer. This is a place to illuminate and demystify all things magical. We are live here. Welcome to Magical Aspirations, a podcast for magical people. We are here today with our guest, Cheyenne, a.k.a. Lupa, who is one of the co-producers of Wildfire Productions. She is a glamour magic practitioner and has been um, studying a lot to do with glamour magic over the years. So we have a lot of really juicy questions for her today about how she incorporates glamour into her magic. Um, So Cheyenne, tell us a little bit about yourself. (laughs) From beginning to 10, I am been practicing for about since I was 16. I started because I was um because my cousin gave me a book on Wicca and that's how I began practicing magic and um all the loveliness about it. I have a beautiful partner and I live in a very cool house with two roommates that are awesome that <laughs> are very much the ones that help inspire me to continue mm-hmm. on to like new and fun things. <laughs> awesome. Well, you have a little bit of a background in working in beauty. Mm-hmm. Uh, tell us about that. So I went to Aveda for mm-hmm. a year and a half, actually, because I had stuff going. Um, and then I got my license. And I still actually know my license is uh, expired now. But I did work for in a salon for, um, I want to say, about six months before mm-hmm. I uh I left it because I didn't like, I didn't like salon life. It wasn't for me. Um, but, and then I continued to do freelance makeup for, you mm-hmm. know, weddings, proms, homecomings and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and now I just kind of like help with putting makeup on for, you know, rituals and, mm-hmm. um, and I help like people get, you know, costumes and dress. And that's what I incorporate in wildfire is I mm-hmm. help pick out, I pick out the costumes a lot of the times mm-hmm. or, you know, people will ask me advice on like, okay, what do I wear? And mm-hmm. So <laughs> that's what yeah. I do now. Yeah. So Cheyenne's actually one of my Stonewolf sisters. Mm-hmm. And um, so she does something that is very special for us uh, before any of our big rituals. She helps us uh, either put on our ritual makeup or help advise us to do our own. Um, so empower us to do our own ritual makeup. And um, there is a lot of history of using um, glamour, beauty, makeup, war paint, things like that, um, all throughout history of changing our appearance to help us um, do what we're trying to do. Yeah. So whether that's your, you know, you're getting ready for a job interview and you want to look your best, or you're getting ready to perform a hand fasting, for example. Mm-hmm. Um, Cheyenne has actually done my makeup for several occasions. Many a times. <laughs> um, including like I said, leading hand fasting where I am basically the priestess of the ceremony to participating in ritual um, with others. Um, So it's just super powerful to be able to learn from somebody who has such a natural talent. And it's super cool watching her work on other people too. We actually have set up a booth in the past and it's been really cool to see how my favorite. Yeah, the the booth is amazing because you can see how she and the other gals in our group have um, basically taken each individual and done the makeup and hair and things like that that suits them uh, the best. Yeah, I actually have a note in here of like, uh, you know, when I do yours, every Mm -hmm. time I've done your makeup, I noticed I always put red. (laughs) <laughs> and uh i guess we can talk about that a little bit of like why i always choose red mm-hmm. uh because red is a very powerful color and it and it excites passion mm-hmm. and you are just you scream passion to me because you have a lot of passion to you and it's just it always clicks in my brain <laughs> oh thank you yeah, then I want to ask what color resonates the most with you personally for your magic? Purple. <laughs> purple. <laughs> I literally live with purple all the time. My hair yeah. is purple and everything. <laughs> yes. 
That's what I, I was going to say a lot of times when Cheyenne colors her hair, it's some variety of purple. <laughs> Every once in a while, there will be a different color in there, yeah. but it's mainly mainly purple. <laughs> hey, well, purple on the crown chakra. That I think that says a lot yes. about you, Cheyenne. Um, what are some <laughs> simple glamour magic rituals that you would say for beginners or for like people who like, I'm not someone who I don't wear a lot of makeup. Um, I don't really do my hair a lot, but I have a pretty bitchin' skin routine, like a skincare routine. Like what are some simple things? things for people who um, aren't, aren't familiar with glamour magic. So people who aren't familiar with glamour magic, like say, and as you reference with, you know, skincare routine and makeup. Um, so simple little r- things you could do. If you don't really wear a lot, you could put intentions into your chapstick. You can mm-hmm. put, um, when you put your moisturizer on, you can draw sigils um, with your moisturizer and, you know, and make it go into your skin. Therefore, it sets, you know, your intent with it. Um, another one would probably be, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, not an intention, a uh, purpose. A purpose mm-hmm. for what you're looking for with, you know, when you put on your eyeshadow, what's your purpose? What's your meaning behind it? What do you want to show others? Mm-hmm. Um so a basic term would be like, you know, you're putting makeup or um, for what others are going to see. You want to show others um, a perception. Mm-hmm. You know, you're trying to put on a perception of what you want and what you need. So you start with, you know, the mm-hmm. outside and setting an intent of when you put your face on. Mm-hmm. Um, Something that just popped in my mind is maybe at the end of the day when you're washing off your makeup or cleaning your face, Mm -hmm. that's actually, you know, a way of resetting Mm -hmm. and letting the day's funk go. Yeah. Uh, Annalisa, I know you talk about like bringing back your breath to you at the end of the Mm -hmm. day. Maybe when you were doing that, you know, you're washing your face and everything else. You're letting go of the day behind you. Mm And, you know, bringing your breath and your energy back to you as well. That is a great idea because I already, especially when I put like my SPF on in the morning, like that is like a, not only like a barrier for the sun, but like, it's like an actual like shield that I'm like, this is my shield. I am putting on my face. I am safe and protected. Like all of, so it makes sense at the end of the day to wash all that off. Thank you. I had never thought of that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a, a great, a great idea too. Like that was the the flip side of it too, is like the beginning of the day, you're washing your face and you're putting on your moisturizer and you're setting your intention for the day. Um, you know, while you're doing that, you're getting ready and you are, you know, energetically getting ready too. Mm-hmm. What's the perception that I want to push out to the world and who do I want to be today? Yeah. Because we can change that each yeah. day if we want to. Yeah, you can You can do one day. You can, because Glamour Magic, you can use it to, a lot of people know it as trying to be beautiful, gorgeous, you know, sexy and things like that. And a lot of people get that misconception of it's. Uh, you know, just for that purpose. But a lot of the time you can use it for other things Mm -hmm. in the sense of say you want to hide yourself one day, like, Mm -hmm. you know, you're out and about in the world and you just don't want to be bothered. You can use it also to like, nobody bother me or give that perception of don't touch me. Don't even think about it. Right. Approach Mm me. Um, Cause it, and it has different purposes. It's a very broad Mm -hmm. uh, practice. Yeah. And uh, another thought that just popped into my mind was um, thinking about the idea of like gender bending with Mm -hmm. your looks too. You could definitely do that a lot with glamour magic. Oh, yeah. And people don't realize that, especially people who are eh, (laughs) transitioning, Mm -hmm. um, you can perceive yourself to be what you want mm-hmm. and make others see what you uh what you see on the inside as well um mm-hmm. because i and the term wicca as above so mm-hmm. below mm-hmm. so from the um you can show what's in the inside outward mm-hmm. or what's on the outside inward mm-hmm. um and it kind of goes hand in hand in my mind mm-hmm. um and a, a few other practitioners look at it as that way too. You can show what's in on the mm. outside as well by right. using glamour magic, by setting a you know perception of what you want. Mm-hmm. Right. 
most people, I always look at it as, because everyone sees differently. Mm-hmm. Everyone sees uh, you differently. And what one person might see um, from you could be different from the next. Right. Um, I know I get different things, but I get very similar different things. Mm-hmm. Um, because I set a purpose of what I want people to see. Mm-hmm. Um in the eye, of course, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Mm-hmm. And so people are going to see differently, but you can set it up where it's an illusion of what you want to perceive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's like one of my favorite aspects of glamour magic. It's, you know, it's all about not the illusionism of it, but it's showing something that you want to show. Yeah. Um, and it helps you like you can be your most authentic self because you have different aspects of your personality at all points yeah like um you know one day you might want to perceive you're sexy and you know fierce Mm -hmm. and then the next you want to perceive that you're actually like i just want to be comfy and cozy Mm -hmm. you know it's perception right right that's really cool (laughs) i think it's taken me a while to kind of get a grasp on that personally because i've always been like oh i just want to be who who i want to be and i don't care you know what others think of me so i don't i don't i'm not going to do my makeup every day and um i'm not going to like look a certain aesthetic or whatever for others approval um but i realize that i get a lot more compliments actually because i just be myself yeah Mm -hmm. oh yeah and like but that's also you before you even realize that you have an aesthetic. Mm-hmm. Everyone has one before they even think so. And you it's not really not being yourself. It's right. showing another self. Right. Because like when you put on or when I or you put on your makeup, mm-hmm. you know, you get different kind of compliments. Right. You get, you know, the compliments that you're not used to and you're just like all giddy and bubbly. Right. About it. And you're just like, like whoa yeah okay and it makes you feel like it can make you feel good and sometimes you know if someone might be like "Mm, rather you didn't (laughs) (laughs) keep that compliment over there yeah i'd rather you didn't (laughs) and you're like okay that one didn't work (laughs) yeah (laughs) that's funny (laughs) so annalisa how do you try to uh portray yourself to the outside world with your appearance Boy, isn't that a loaded question? <laughs> it's a, it's. Um, I guess I have a strange relationship with it because, like I said, I'm not someone I don't, I don't wear a lot of makeup. My hair is like 90 percent of the time on a bun in a bun on the top of my head. Um, I don't know if I know how to answer that question because there are certainly times where. I have this like real urge to like dress real feminine. And like, I guess I do like I wear a lot of dresses, but definitely just because they're more comfy than anything else. Um, (laughs) I don't know. I don't know. That's a, I'm, you might have to come back to me on that one. I'm going to need to think about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, One of the things though, as I was thinking about, I was just thinking about like, how do we um, try to portray ourselves to the outside world has a lot to do with how we can practice our magic. Mm -hmm. Um, Because we are like putting forth our intention of this is who I'm going to be. And this is what I can do. Oh yeah, for sure. And that's, that's how a a lot of the times people, you know, that's one of the ways of glamour magic actually Mm -hmm. is you set out into the world. Like we're actually not harmful. A lot of the times, most people who are, um, you know, practicing magicians and, or ma- uh, magic workers um, are mundane looking people. Mm-hmm. You know, that soccer mom, you know, mm-hmm. um, you know, that guy playing pool. It's mm-hmm. a lot of mundane people and you don't even realize it because you're portraying like this is how I practice it. Mm-hmm. This is how and you don't necessarily have to do the whole like makeup and people Mm. get that misconstrued a lot Mm -hmm. of oh it's makeup oh it's a a, like whole dress up and everything else it's not Mm -hmm. it's really not it's a broad spectrum Mm -hmm. so we were talking a little bit earlier about before we got on here about actually how you can use glamour magic in your home i think that might be something that you would be interested in annalisa oh definitely that is an extremely fascinating thing so like what would you what would you suggest to me for that and anyone else who i guess has a 
not a skewed definition of glamour magic, but like it's something that I've never been drawn to because of the glam part of it, I guess, you know? Yeah. Like yeah. glam, especially yeah. in today's pop culture and all of that, it's got a very specific definition and like that's not something I, gr- I gravitate towards. But I tell you, I want to make my house as comfy and pretty as possible. So definitely talk to me about that. <laughs> <laughs> so you can use glamour magic in your home oh, as well in certain ways and it goes into like feng shui. Like, what are you trying to portray? Uh, portray? What are you wanting out of your home? Are you wanting protection? Are you wanting comfort? Are you wanting warmth? Um, you know, and setting up different things for uh, different purposes. You know, and a lot of people don't realize it is when you add, you know, a piece in your living room for, uh, you know, protection. Um that's actually a form of glamour magic because it's like a like a statue or a poster or a picture um because it's it's adding to the aesthetic of the room as well as you know creating protection or anything else you need um and so feng shui is like are you want what are you wanting out of it like when you look at a picture are you looking at like when you look at a picture of a room what are you what's drawing your eye why is it drawing your eye? Is it, you know, the warmth, the style, the comfort? Um, it's the different ways you set up a room to kind of portray what you want. Mm-hmm. Um, and feng shui kind of goes into, you know, the flow of the room, the, you know, of course, style and everything else. But there's also many other purposes behind it, which are like you can create it create a you know a circle in the middle of your living room for you know um you know practices and stuff like that without it actually being a full you know drawn out circle Mm -hmm. you know and there's it's it's a pretty neat aspect of it Mm -hmm. um it's a fascinating as you're as we've been chatting about this so far i keep getting this um i have a catholic background so like that's always something that influences my thought um and i feel like i can feel saint michael like tapping on my shoulder right now so he is someone who (laughs) i call on for protection pretty frequently and one of the things that like if you read about saint michael and like things that he'll do especially in like the protection of like women and children he does his own type of like glamour magic where like you call on him and like people will report, you know, um, like a woman will feel unsafe. She'll call on St. Michael for protection and a criminal or someone, I know I'm messing the story up, but like basically the point is that you'll have a woman by herself and like the criminal who would be coming to, uh, you know, hurt her would see like a large man with her or something like that, or like calling on him to like make you invisible and things like that. Like, I really like the aspect of talking about glamour magic as far as like protection. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And like, you can add glamour magic, you can add charms, you can add, um, you know, it into your makeup, you can add it into things on your body and give it, it's glamour magic is a good like, um, how do I put this? Like a good way to like an add on or a good, uh, you know, layered. It's a good add on or layer mm-hmm. to enhance mm-hmm. something you're already doing mm-hmm. um, to enhance mm-hmm. your practicing. So, you know how you you would call upon him and um, then you would add on something on your body, like a necklace or, mm-hmm. you know, maybe your makeup that day, or maybe your clothes or, mm-hmm. you know, just something small, but like layer it or, you know, it en- enhances, mm-hmm. you know, and we like everyone wears, I don't have mine on at the moment. Um, <laughs> like, you know, a lot of people wear necklaces or rings mm-hmm. or bracelets to like add on to, um, mm-hmm. Yeah, they're like whatever they're needing at that time mm-hmm. um you know whether it be clarity or you know protection and stuff as that um because you know you're wearing you know an, an amethyst right now mm-hmm. um actually that cheyenne got me <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's usually my gifts uh-huh. <laughs> it's a lot of like necklaces or bracelets <laughs> because mm-hmm. it's a good add-on and it's like people don't realize they do glamour magic to add on to what they need or what they're ha- having. Mm-hmm. 
So that that brings me to an interesting story because yesterday I was getting ready um, for our Turn Down for Tornado Relief fundraiser. Mm -hmm. I was packing everything up early in the morning so I could change at work and go straight to the event. So I have my clothes in my computer bag and I'm getting ready to change out of my scrubs and I pull them out and I look in the mirror and I don't have a necklace. I was in such a hurry. I had showered and I didn't put on a necklace and I always wear some kind of a necklace. Usually it's an amulet. I have a Freya. I have an Ansu's. I have a Celtic um, Triskel. I have a crazy lace agate. I have all of these different necklaces that I switch out depending on what kind of energy that I need for the day and things like that. And I did not have a necklace and I was going to be emceeing an event. I was going to be on stage without a <laughs> freaking necklace. <laughs> so I'm like, I know there is going to be a necklace in this computer bag. I just know it. So like I'm digging through all the pockets and in the front, I find this amethyst <laughs> necklace that Cheyenne had gotten me. And I, it was perfect because then I was able to channel that positive energy of manifestation that amethyst brings. Mm -hmm. And it was given to me by somebody special to me. <laughs> who also has an amazing stage presence. So I needed that confidence because I was going to be up on stage. So it was the perfect, you know, piece of jewelry. And it, it was just in my bag. Yeah. It was there when I needed it. Well, yeah, I love like that kind of brings me to yesterday as well. <clears throat> like yesterday when we had gotten there, um, mm -hmm. I all I had on was like the temporary tattoos on my face because I was like, oh, we're going to be sweating, uh, you know, most of the day. And I didn't do anything with my face. And if you know, like I noticed I kept dropping or messing up whenever we were just, you know, just practicing, spinning around, get people's attention. I kept dropping and mess messing up with my uh, trident. And I was like, why? Why am I doing that? And when I went to go, and I was like, you know what? I'm actually going to go do my makeup because I have makeup in my car. And once I got, you know, my makeup on and everything, like, I got the confidence boost that mm -hmm. I always get whenever I put on a face. You know, I got that, you know, that strength to stand tall and, mm -hmm. you know, be like, I'm awesome. Right. Um, and I didn't drop it anymore. And I was, <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, yeah, I realized what happened there. I did not have that mo moment of confidence in me yeah. until I, you know, showed it outwardly, too. Mm -hmm. You know, so that happened for me. I, <laughs> I love that so much because as you, you pointed out about, like, jewelry, I, you know, then I have a necklace, a labradorite, and a little mirror that I wear every day. I've got these kyanite earrings that I almost never take out of my ears. They're always there. That brings me around to uh, – this is the first conversation that Cheyenne and I are having, but turns out she's a nerd just like me. Cheyenne, you want to <laughs> talk a little bit about the etymology of the word glamour? So the etymology of it isn't uh, – a lot of people get it misconstrued with pop culture of, you know, glamour being, you know, about, you know, putting a full face on and, I like, putting a whole, like, you know, this whole, like, fancy schmancy, sparkly, bright and pretty. When that's not the case, that, like, glamour was once looked at as uh, – an illusion. Mm -hmm. It wasn't exactly supposed to be like makeup. It was the illusionist of it. And I was about to say, I've got some, some notes on it here too, that it says um, as far back as 1720 um, in the Scottish language, it was glamour was based very similarly to our grammar, which is a common word for language. Um, but in the Scottish, it was literally just magic, enchantment, and spell. And then that has been altered yeah. through the times. I know we both nerded out and wrote down that it wasn't until 1840 <laughs> was the first recording yeah. of it saying a sense of magical beauty or an alluring charm. And then it also wasn't until 1939 that it started to be referred to as a quality of, a quality of attractiveness, especially associated with Hollywood high fashion and celebrity. So I definitely find that really surprising that like this – everybody's bombarded with what we think glamour is now, but it's such a recent definition, you know, as long as yeah. language has been around, it just means what we're talking about, you know, every week here, magic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's literally just the definition of magic. It's nothing more like everyone uses glamour magic um, 
and what they see it best, whether they realize it or not. Um, it's just the use of magic at a broad spectrum. I want to jump back to talking about like accessories and um, things like that. I um, I always wear these bracelets that I have on right now. Um, I have on my right arm, I have a bracelet that says progress, not perfection. That was given to me by Jackie mm-hmm. after I finished my first um, program and or workout. Um, so she wanted to get me a gift as a uh, congratulations, but also a reminder. And I got to pick it out. And like I said, it says progress, not perfection. Mm-hmm. Um, the other bracelet on this wrist is my Stonewolf Clan bracelet. Uh, it's a black rubber bracelet that was from our anniversary event um, two years ago. So I have my my family with me always. Um, I have a fluorite bracelet, and fluorite is actually really good for inflammation. Um, mm-hmm. It improves energy flow. Mm-hmm. And I broke my right arm uh, as a child, so I actually do have some stiffness and arthritis in it. And whenever I go to massage a dog, I have to use those little tiny muscles and um, all those bones get a workout in my hands. And it actually um, seems to help me with my flow whenever I'm massaging the dog because I have this fluorite bracelet on Mm -hmm. here. Um, On my left wrist, I have two bracelets, um, one that is a chain mail uh, rainbow and then a rubber rainbow (laughs) here as well. So um, I have always been a rainbow fan, um, even before I knew there was any symbolism um, with the LGBTQ community. Um, I have always loved rainbows. They bring me joy and happiness. Um, the story of the rainbow in the Bible where, um, God shows a rainbow after the great flood saying he'll never, um, flood the earth again. Um, that to me, of course, is a message of hope, but also, um, that there is always time for new beginnings. Um, so even though I don't subscribe to a Christian, you know, pantheon, it reminds me of that. Mm-hmm. And then um, the rainbow in a lot of African cultures um, represents the serpent, which is the um, connector of the earth and the mm-hmm. sky. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's really important to me to, that I always have my rainbows here with me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love the rainbow, like the spectrum of the rainbow, and like what mm-hmm. it kind of it kind of excludes it excludes happiness. No matter like, me anytime too. you look at it, can you really look at a rainbow and not be happy? Mm-hmm. Like I can't. It's impossible. It's impossible. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like right. it's so hard. Rainbows are too like too great. It makes you smile I, every time I see a rainbow. Right after it rains, I'm like, oh my god, a rainbow! Mm. Yes, <laughs> in the car, Cor- <laughs> pointing out to Cortland, he's just like, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> my other accessory story here. Um, is about my leather jacket. Oh, I love your leather <laughs> the jacket. Leather jacket. Oh, <laughs> so, leather jacket makes me so excited. I'm like, what do you got? <laughs> <laughs> so I have this leather jacket that I bought whenever I was 13. Um, since I'm a Leo, my birthday is in the summer mm-hmm. and it's hotter than shit. But I saved up my birthday money when I was 13 so I could buy a leather jacket because all of my like punk rock and grunge friends had leather jackets. And then my friends who were raised in biker families, they had leather jackets. So I really wanted one. And like I said, I saved up my birthday money on my 13th birthday to get this jacket and I still rock it to this day. <laughs> she does. But every time, every time I wear this jacket, I always get comments about how I portray myself. Like, mm-hmm. wow, look at you. Like, you're such a badass. Yeah, or, you always give off the vibe of like, I'm fucking awesome. I could beat your ass in like 2.2 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> like every time you wear it and I'm just like, oh my God. I love it. It gets me so excited every time I see the jacket. Yep. I'm just like, oh, it's that time of the year. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, now I have these boots that I've had for about seven <laughs> years and they go up to my knees and they're black. So you were yesterday, yep. right? Yep. Yeah, those are awesome, too. 
So I got I got the jacket and the boots and definitely it channels a different persona whenever I wear that. Even whenever I am not like doing that with intention, I realize that people respond to me differently. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you get a different vibe from yourself. Even when you put it on, yes. you realize you, ha- you give yourself a different vibe. Because that's... Agree. Because when you, it's the perception of what that jacket or those boots represent. Mm-hmm. Um, because when you put that on, you're like, I'm awesome. Like, I'm I'm ready to go. I really feel mm-hmm. like the jacket is like armor. Yeah. For me. Yeah. it's kind of It kind of gives you that stronghold and like mm-hmm. that badasseriness to it. <laughs> and it's funny because leather obviously is, you know, it comes from cows and it is... The cow's skin is very thick to protect them. Um, So to protect them from insect bites, from brush, from getting injured. And so whenever I wear leather, I feel that it is a protection Mm -hmm. for me. When I wear any kind of leather, I feel like I have the animal's protection on me. So yesterday I actually was wearing a vest that was made out of hog leather um and so I, <laughs> I love that mess. It was so cute. Um, it's something that I um, like I said, I always just kind of channel the protection of that animal. Mm-hmm. And I know that it is, you know, for some people morally sticky to eat meat or wear leather or things like that, but I only wear leather or skin from an animal that was consumed for its meat. Yeah. Hmm. Um, and I have, you know, processed animals myself. I've collected the skins, um, things like that. And like I said, I just I feel like it's important that we are respectful of the mm-hmm. animals um, during that process. And I always thank them for their service and their sacrifice. Oh, yeah. So that is the thing that I do when I put on the leather. I thank the animal and I channel their spirit for protection. That that makes me think of like when I put, you know, every time we said this earlier, like every time I put uh, do your ritual makeup, I always do red. Um, mm-hmm. And the reason I always do red is like I because uh, you perceive your loud, exciting, passionate, bold. But you also have love. You have love for, you know, you just like the animals. You mm-hmm. thank them for their service every time we have like an mm-hmm. event and something. Um, you know, you always thank the animals. You know, you came in here today and was loving up on my cats. and Because <laughs> you, whether I, like other people see it or not, you always have love to give. You know, you're a love mm-hmm. warrior. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. Um and that's uh, that's another reason I oh, always put red on you. Like I just always see so much to it because like it's there's a lot there. There's always a lot of love and a lot of passion, mm-hmm. and you're very fierce too. You're fierce <laughs> about the way you love as well, and that just made me think of that. <laughs> you will love me back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I you will be my that. friend. You're gonna be my friend. You're gonna be my friend. Oh well, well, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna say that is that is pretty true. I meet someone new that I like, and like, I'm like, "You're gonna be my friend." Yeah, you're gonna be my friend. I love, I love it about Becky. Anytime well, someone I, new comes around, she's just like, "You're gonna be my friend." Hi, right, we're gonna be friends now. We're gonna be friends. I know exactly what you mean, but about like Becky, as far right. as just talking about your passion and your certainly your redness. I mean, it was the same reason that I knew that you were gonna officiate my wedding, and like I think that all of the people who are lucky enough to have have their wedding officiated by you or like already like 10 steps ahead of everybody else because you give us just this like hurdle out of the know. gate you know <laughs> i think that i kind of did that with you too annalisa i was like oh you have rocks you're gonna be my you friend did. that's 100 <laughs> percent what happened very much in the same way that yeah. i was like hi we're doing this podcast it was like hi we're gonna be yeah. friends forever and I'm so grateful you <laughs> <I> did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, as we're rolling around in this big love puddle right now, um, Cheyenne, what are you studying that's like really got like your fire like lit up? Like what's stoking Cheyenne's fire right now? Oh, right mm-hmm. now, actually. So me and my roommate have been getting really into um, learning to do m- like medicinal magic and making medicines out of plants. 
Um, yeah, it's been really fun. We just made a salve out of comfrey in olive oil. Um, and then I'm making, I'm trying to make a face mask right now, um, out of yarrow and strawberries. Ooh. Um, <laughs> yeah, because, you know, yarrow helps with inflammation and I've been having horrible inflammation. So I'm the test subject. <laughs> um, so, and so we've uh, we've both been learning about that a lot. Uh, she's the one who's gotten a lot of the books. I only just ordered a new one um, the other day, and it still hasn't come in yet. But I'm so excited for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm uh, definitely definitely here for that. Oh, sorry, my cat's meowing in the background. You guys, yeah, <laughs> we hear him. Well, it's also like the reason I'm trying to learn how to do medicines, and also because I have a big a big, big love for, um, self-care. Cause that goes a lot into glamour magic as well as self-care. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm really big about it. Like <laughs> Becky's gotten one of my like, uh, bath bomb spell jars. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. and I just start. I made the, I started making those a little while back. Um, I, I put a lot of like, um, you know, er, uh, like natural herbs and stuff in it, as mm-hmm. well as you know, I put also like plants and um, flowers as well because the mixture of them helps kind of you know promote your inner witch or whatever that you need at that time. I've been having trouble with inflammation, so I've been using like fluorite for the stones and mm-hmm. yarrow and comfrey and turmeric. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Because, like, it helps. It really helps. <laughs> so I'll actually put that in my bath water. And that's another form of glamour magic is doing a lot of self-care acts. Mm-hmm. Um, because mm-hmm. it kind of, you can set what you need in, like, a bath. Or you can even do a shower. Um, I'm also learning to make uh, steamers. Because mm-hmm. um, steamers are a whole different process from a bath bomb. Mm-hmm. Um and so, like, that's got my attention right now is learning to do a lot of, like, self-care things um, and also I medicines because that is self-care. Yeah. Yeah. I am hella into that right now. Like I said, like, my skincare, like, I hit 30 and all of a sudden I was like, shit, like, moisturizing is, like, really important. And now I'm, like, yes, on the moisturizer, the like, skin, sunscreen, mm-hmm. all the things. And I've really, especially mm-hmm. in the last, like, three to six months gotten into a lot of like natural kind of like, you know, vegan friendly stuff. Um, and I've really seen a change, especially in my face. And so I send us, hook us up with whatever you got. Cause I'm down for trying it. <laughs> yeah. My whole kitchen table right now is covered. I don't know if you saw it. It was just covered in like plants and all different kinds of things. Cause you know, it's been, it's been exciting to learn the like mm-hmm. different aspects and, different purposes for each thing and like the numerous purpose you know each plant Mm -hmm. can have which is so much fun for me right now (laughs) yeah and she was talking about the the bath bomb jars they are so beautiful in and of themselves too they're so aesthetically pleasing she decorates the top of them based on the intention um and all of the ingredients they're aesthetically pleasing together too so they really look nice and they can help you to set your intention with what you're trying to do Um, I I had asked her to make one for me and um, we're running low on jars because there's a jar shortage out there (laughs) still unfortunately (laughs) Um, but every every witch has got to have have some jars laying around that's what I was going to say I was like you had me a jar like (laughs) Right. So she said, if you, if you give me a jar, I'll make you one. So I found two jars at my house, one 16 ounce, like pint sized giant one. And then a small one that was probably like eight ounces or no, it was the four ounce one, the little guy. So I gave her both, both to her and she made one for me and one for my husband, Adam. And the one she made for me was the giant one. (laughs) With screen, Becky, it screamed her. (laughs) with horns on the top of it Uh it's some of that some of that big witch energy (laughs) yeah (laughs) and then uh, adam got the got the small one because it was like it makes sense it made sense in my brain when i made them (laughs) and i made them match too though Oh, that one was one without the other, right? Exactly. That was for the more delicate Pisces husband. Yep. Correct, <laughs> correct. 
<laughs> it was great. It's fun. I I very much enjoy it. It's because I also do, like I said earlier, is so um as above, so below. So inside the jar is a, you know, there's the bath bomb I create, and then there's Epsom salts with it that I uh hand make and I put, you know, kind of like a uh flower herb mixture in it as well and then I like sparkle in some other stuff just because like you know sparkles are nice water beads (laughs) are fun um (laughs) just for funsies and I also put stones for the intention of what um I'm creating that jar for Mm -hmm. um you know and in each and I put multiple ones because you know every stone has multiple purposes um a lot of the times and then there's some that just pair really well together using them together Mm -hmm. and so I'll put those in the jars and then you know it's this beautiful creation on the inside and on the outside that's why I decorate them too Mm -hmm. because it shows all around it's beautiful in Mm -hmm. and out in and out and like so as above so below Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) you know that's cool yeah, that it's, it's really a lot cool. of fun for me, honestly. Like, I will stay up way past my bedtime because I have a personal bedtime. <laughs> and I'll get, like, it'll be 12 o'clock, at, you know, at night, and Corlin will be like, go to bed. Stop. <laughs> All right. Stop. <laughs> but I'm having fun in the <laughs> workshop. Yeah, I'm having fun over here. Leave me alone. <laughs> well, I think that's a good segue into the, the next question that we have actually submitted by Adriana, who unfortunately couldn't join us today. Um, she just popped into my mind when you were saying the steamers, because she loves to do a lot of things in the shower magically. Yes. So we got to hook her up with some of those steamers. <laughs> uh, yes, we sure. do. And then I'll ask her question um, about what are some ways that you can incorporate the different elements into glamour magic? Uh, Okay, so when you're when you're wanting to ground and be part of the earth Mm -hmm. um that was actually i wrote that down somewhere um so when you're trying to like mend into the earth um you want to wear it kind of goes into like color theory as well Mm -hmm. when you think of you know a certain color you think of green you think of Mm -hmm. earth and you know leaves Mm -hmm. and stuff like that you might wear a lot of green that day Mm -hmm. um or, you know, you wear certain stones to ground and center yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, like, say you're wanting to feel light and breezy. Um, mm-hmm. I would say kind of using color theory along with, you know, certain aspects or certain, mm-hmm. like, uh, trinkets and, you know, colors. And, you know, when you if you do wear makeup, you know, you put on that, uh, you know, that green eyeshadow. Something mm-hmm. simple and little. Um, but it makes you remember and think about, you know, grounding and center and right. um, as well. You know, you can mix it with, you know, putting in color theory. Um, mm-hmm. That's one of my favorite things and one of the reasons I got into Glamour mm-hmm. Magic. Because I got into Glamour Magic when I was in school and learning color theory mm-hmm. and how it incorporates into elements. Because when, mm-hmm. you, when you put, you know green on you think of the earth or green or browns you think Mm -hmm. of earth and being in into the earth and you know Mm -hmm. rooting and then you think of red as fire and Mm -hmm. um sometimes a little bit of like yellow as well for fire Mm -hmm. um but like yellow is a very fun color to try and like mix it with like wind colors as Mm -hmm. well um at least for me because it's it's a cool concept, um, mm-hmm. and color theory goes into it. Kind of goes with personal beliefs of what you see, right? Because um, you know what color do you relate to? Because mm-hmm. um, color th- theory also is kind of like how you how you see it. What do mm-hmm. you see in it? Um, when you think of a color, you think of this or this or that. You blue, everyone kind of thinks of water, but when mm-hmm. you were a kid, you thought of blue probably as you know a boy color but Mm -hmm. nowadays you don't anymore or the sky yeah and the sky Mm -hmm. (laughs) and you can use that for wind as well Mm -hmm. which is really cool to me um color Mm -hmm. theory is kind of a um uh it's a it's another one that's like it's umbrellaed Mm -hmm. into aspects of what you see right you think of uh when you think of an animal you think of a color for it as well Mm -hmm. um and so you can perceive, you know, different, you know, your spirit, mm-hmm. your spirit animal, 
You know, mm-hmm. you can, what color do you see as your spirit animal? Mm-hmm. You could wear that on you. And I think like one time when I did ritual fa- uh, makeup um, for you guys, I did like based on what animal I saw mm-hmm. in y'all. I think I did I did a butterfly that day for you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was really fun. Yeah. Um, but I did it based on the colors and the animal I saw in your spirit that night. Yeah. Um, so that's always really cool for me. Yeah. It's like uh, looking at it and the aspects of adding. It's, it's a good, la- like it layers, mm-hmm. especially when you're trying to do elements. It's best to layer that one. Mm-hmm. Um. Because elements are so strong and so, you know, a part of every day. Mm -hmm. You cannot have them. So you layer that because then you can feel it more intensely. Mm -hmm. You can feel it on you. And so it, like, kind of goes into you. Yeah. So I like that concept a lot. (laughs) And something that just hit me, you know, whenever you're talking here, it's a really an important thing to hit home that – it can be however you perceive it. Mm-hmm. So it's all about your magic. Yeah. You know, your own personal magic. Oh, yeah. It's like, I see this color as this element and this makes me feel this way. Yeah. So. Just like any other practicing, it's mm-hmm. the same thing for, you know, mm-hmm. glamour magic. It's how you perceive it, how it works for you. Mm-hmm. Um, you can learn like little basic tips and tricks, but then, you know, um, adapt it to you and what mm-hmm. works for you mm-hmm. um because you might not do makeup you might not do you know mm-hmm. accessories i don't i don't have anything on right now and i feel weird <laughs> <laughs> it's it's super weird all i have on is my grandma's uh ring mm-hmm. and that's just because i don't take it off ever <laughs> mm-hmm. all right i've got a juicy question here This one is from Adriana as well. Uh, So she had said, when I think about a master glamour magic practitioner, I think about that scene in the craft where she turns into a different person. (laughs) Are there levels of glamour magic that a practitioner must master? No, like I, I very much have a annoyance, I guess, to that scene. Um, I love the craft. It's one of my favorite movies. But when I started to practice uh, glamour magic and started to learn a lot about it, um, that scene, like, irked me. It's not something you can just snap your fingers and do, obviously. Mm -hmm. You know, pop culture very much extremifies practicing and uh, in any kind of witchcraft. Um, Mm -hmm. And that scene just, I was like, ah, it's not, that's not okay. (laughs) Um, because, um, you don't, there's nothing you need to master. There's nothing Mm -hmm. you need to, um, do an extreme amount of knowledge on. Mm -hmm. In reality, everyone does it, whether they realize it or not. Mm -hmm. Um, and when you become a practitioner and you incorporate it a lot in your life, Mm -hmm. um, It just kind of flows naturally. It's a natural Mm -hmm. set. It's not something that you like a master practitioner needs to learn this or that. Or Mm -hmm. there's nothing that says that you have to do these things. There's nothing that says you incorporate it into your life. It just kind of happens naturally because a lot of people, um, you know, do do it without knowing. Mm -hmm. Um, So that was always something I found fascinating about it. Yeah. But, (laughs) you know, that's, that's one of those situations where it's like, um, no, you don't necessarily have to. Like, (laughs) it's just, it comes, it comes with, when you like start to like learn about it, Mm -hmm. when you start to learn how glamour magic works, you start to realize you're like, oh, I do that. Mm -hmm. I already do that. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, but if you pay more attention to it, then you yeah. can put more intention. Tension. Yeah, you can put more intention behind it. Mm-hmm. And so you just like add on. You just yeah. add it to it. You know, a lot of people, you can say affirmations when you're washing your face or mm-hmm. doing your skincare routine or when you're, you know, when you're getting dressed for the day and you're mm-hmm. putting intentions or, you know, um, perce- uh, a perception behind it. You know, you start to realize you're like, oh, and I can add it on a little more intensely. Yeah. You know, and there's no like, I don't know if there's really like a master to glamour magic. It's Mm -hmm. 
it's beautiful on its own. Mm-hmm. It's just it's just something that is mm-hmm. creative, creative mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. that you just add, mm-hmm. add, 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 and then at the end of it, you're just like, I feel, you know, whatever way you're trying to feel. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of the times, I, I on the inside, I am very confident and very much, you know, you said it best mm-hmm. of like. I live unapologetically mm-hmm. <laughs> and like sometimes it's perceived as mean or, you know, um, extremely confident or, you know, sometimes, you know, I give off a sexual energy even though I don't try to, mm-hmm. but that's because I perceive myself as how I feel inside of I am who I am and mm-hmm. I live how I live. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't, I'm not going to apologize for who I am as a person. Right. Right. You know, and that's part of of it as well. Mm-hmm. You know, you ca- I put out what is inside. Right. Yeah. And I'm not going to apologize for the dirty look I just gave you. Because <laughs> <laughs> you deserved it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I'm like, mm. Yeah. Well, that kind of brings me to, like, the other day, um, you know, our friend Bull, uh, his new partner I noticed I was like well I was like why she's getting to know all the other ladies and she's she has social issues as well um and I noticed it I was like well she's trying to get to know the other ladies but like she has never once approached me Mm -hmm. (laughs) and I asked Bull about it and he was like uh that's because you scare her (laughs) I was like I didn't even do nothing (laughs) I'm not going to do anything. I didn't try to scare. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, well, he was like, you just give off. I was like, that's because I am confident. Mm-hmm. I give off that. Right. And, you know, inward, outward. Yeah. And it, that that can be kind of hard um, sometimes when you are confident that people see you as less approachable mm-hmm. or things like that. Um, oh, so, yeah. you know, it, it can be hard because it's like, well, I am confident in who I am, but that doesn't mean that I don't want to get to know you yeah. and who you are. So like, that's something that I over time have learned how to, you know, approach people differently and things like mm-hmm. that, because I do want to get to know them. I, I do want to open up to them and I'm not trying to like put off this like hard exterior or a wall mm-hmm. or things like that, but I do have boundaries, yeah. you know, and I'm going to keep my boundaries and I'm not going to change who I am just to make you more comfortable too. Oh yeah. So that's kind of like a little balancing act. It is. is. It's a fun balancing act. And I, I always forget to do the balance act on that one a lot. Um, It is something I'm getting better at. It's just like, you know, my aesthetic and how I dress and how I look, Mm -hmm. um, is intimidating to a lot of other women Mm -hmm. because women always a lot of women I've met in my life have always had trouble having Mm self-confidence and that kind of goes into you know glamour magic as well is you can perceive your Mm self-confidence outwardly um and again you do it without realizing it a lot of the times because Mm -hmm. you know you you dress like how you want to dress. You wear mm-hmm. that that skirt, that dress, that, mm-hmm. you know, those pairs of shorts that, like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably the first person to compliment your butt, I'll be honest. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, and, but a lot of women, and you can see it the way, with how they dress a lot of the time, is they're trying to be confident in their self, but they struggle or mm-hmm. they don't have any confidence in themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And that's one reason that I try to compliment people a lot. Mm-hmm. I'm not a person that gives like shallow compliments, but I will compliment yeah. something about you because yeah. I want you to know that people appreciate who you are. Maybe it's like, I really appreciate you helping me out with this, or I really like that shirt, or yeah. I like your earrings, or I like your necklace. And you can really see people like open up with that yeah, too. You can see them I make glow. more I make more friends in the bathrooms at bars than anywhere else. 
like, oh, I love your hair. Yes, because yes. The, because women will be in the restroom like trying to fix their makeup yeah. or their hair, and they're you can see that they're not confident and they're not sure about who they're hanging out with, and you can feel that like whole energy. social dynamic and energy, and just by being like that friendly person that's like, hey, I like your shoes or mm-hmm. whatever, you can see them relax in that moment. Yeah, they're like, oh. Well, thank you. I got yeah. this on sale at blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah. That's how you know it's going to be a good friend. If they oh, tell yeah. you that they got it for cheap somewhere, <laughs> oh, <yeah>. fuck yes. <laughs> yeah, be quick about it and be like, I got it from Goodwill. Yeah. yeah. Excited. I gave nine bucks for this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Super excited about a deal. I'm not going to be friends with you just putting this out there if you're going to tell me how expensive your shirt yeah, is. But- right. <laughs> <laughs> You know you can get that from the thrift store, right? Right. Same thing. Exactly. <laughs> well, yeah. Like, like, well, that seems a little wasteful. <laughs> yeah. Like, why would you spend that much money? I could get food for that. Right. Right. That's like half my rent for that bag. <laughs> right. <laughs> my my bag was ten bucks. What you talking right. about? Right. I gotta resew it. <laughs> totally apart. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> But again, it's just like how you, um, you know, put out to the world who you are. And uh, like I said, that's that kind of is like a way of glamour magic, I feel is, you know, complimenting people based on their appearance, because it's something you're connecting with them on that level that that what they were putting on is seen. Yes. You know, they other people are seeing it and feeling it. Yeah. And even though like maybe they didn't have confidence in it. Yeah. It's still like one of those moments where they're like, oh, you can see what I was trying to do. Thank right. Thank you. Right. Oh, it's great. It's a great feeling. And I like I feel yeah. I feel as if I always compliment everyone whenever I see something where I'm like, that looks awesome. Yes. You know, you look great and whatnot. And I always try and help add on like yesterday when you're putting on your vest. I'm yeah. like, oh, do your little frillies out. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And that's what we're I feel like we're all here for is to build each other up. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. And like, you know, and it, it's a build on it's an add on yeah it's great it's such a good thing to have you know that what you were trying to receive get complimented you're just yeah. like oh yes yeah and it's yeah. something kind of new for me because I grew up with all brothers um you know my mom had brothers things like that and I didn't really even learn how to do makeup until middle school because my stepmom like took me to a beauty counter like once and that was the, the how I learned how to do makeup and still not very well. And I, I really wasn't somebody that like liked to be perceived as super feminine. Mm-hmm. Like I hated pink as a kid, like all of those kind of things. And so I am not used to until lately being around a group of powerful females yeah. that can build each other up and oh, that we yeah. all learn from each other. Like, hey, you could wear this or you could do your makeup like this or yeah. do this and it'll be better. Like, like I never had really anybody to learn that from. Yeah. And so it's a really like special kind of experience. Oh yeah, for sure. For sure. And I know like I've had conversations with you whenever I'm doing your makeup and stuff and you'll like <laughs> ask me questions of like, well, what would this color do? And how, like, how would this look on my skin and yeah. everything else? And I always love, love that. Um, even though sometimes I get like the brain foggy because you know me, I always go, Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> well, because you're like in the in the moment. Like yeah, you're, I get you're focused on what you're doing yeah. and channeling that energy in that moment. But like I said, I don't really have out other uh ways to learn. Yeah. <clears throat> and I really respect your your opinion of what you're doing and always ask for advice. Yeah, I, I and I appreciate that a lot, even when I'm like, uh, and I'll later on think about it and I'll be like Oh, I should have told her this. And then, like, sometimes I'll message you too yeah. about it. Be it's like, hey, planting this. those seeds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It goes to my brain like sometimes slow, especially when I'm like zoned into something. Mm-hmm. Um, especially doing ritual makeup. I get very, um, I try to connect with the person I'm doing uh, their makeup or mm-hmm. like their face paint because um, it wasn't until like the, uh, well, it was like in the 1800s that, um, makeup and ritual combined in Samaria and it, mm-hmm. it kind of spread across you know um 
across Europe and in, into Egypt as well. Mm-hmm. And, e- and in G- Egyptians um, using colors to represent their gods mm-hmm. um, in different ways, which was always very fascinating to me. Um, but, you know, whenever we combine, you know, makeup part of ritual and doing mm-hmm. people's ritual faces i always connect with the person and uh, you you said it a million times mm-hmm. of me like all of a sudden i'll go oh because it it mm-hmm. goes into my it snaps in my brain um like okay this person this thing or yeah. this person this rune because that yeah. is what they connect with or this is what they need right now right um and that's kind of like okay that goes into the way of glamour ma- makeup, the mm-hmm. makeup makeup aspect of it, um, and how that goes into, uh, you know, how we when we do rituals, what is needed at that time, mm-hmm. um, and you know that's a way of showing it outwardly and adding on to what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it makes it more more powerful to me because everyone's face is done, and you can just see the unity and the strength of it all mm-hmm. of like all of us coming together and practicing together and flowing our energies into this one thing right. or this purpose of what we're doing. Right. It's really, it's a really cool concept and it's always, it always makes me super excited whenever, you know, doing everyone's faces mm-hmm. because I get to be the one to implement it. Mm-hmm. Um, well, me and, you know, me and Alex, a lot of the times mm-hmm. is, um, and I, I like, I know Alex, Alex knows a little of glamour makeup, but she just has it naturally mm-hmm. and it's beautiful watching her do others. And like, mm-hmm. she said it best. If, uh, you want like gory and like messy, go to Alex. If you want it pretty neat and like fan, not fancy, but like pristine go to me (laughs) because we are two different styles of it right and it's 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 beautiful to watch the creations we make yes it's it's really cool (laughs) yeah and basically this goes back to what you were saying that you kind of hone in on what each individual needs it's really like you're channeling that message Mm -hmm. from the universe as far as what that person needs in that moment to connect oh yeah spiritually yeah. yeah i like i connect with the person as a whole and who they are Mm -hmm. Um, and every once in a while I'll ask like, what color do you associate yourself with? Mm -hmm. Um, I kind of stopped doing that and just kind of let whatever color I see around them. Yeah. You know, like, and let the universe decide it. Yeah. Like, what color are they? Yeah, you know, I always like I always paint a rainbow. If I do Jackie's face, I always paint mm-hmm. a rainbow on Jackie, mm-hmm. um, or like Prisma colors mm-hmm. on, on her. Um, like I already said, I do a lot of red on you, um, mm-hmm. Cortland. I usually do like blue or yellow, mm-hmm. um, and then like Megan, I do green, but I also do like blues on her mm-hmm. or like oranges and. It just depends on where she's at at that time. Mm-hmm. And I noticed that. And I just kind of, like, let the universe decide what um, that person needs through me. And then I just add it to them. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. It's really, it's really beautiful. <laughs> awesome. So I know that you are one of the co-founders of Wildfire Productions. Yeah. And y'all do amazing fire performing and flow work. And so I just have a question about how you incorporate glamour magic into performance. Okay. Uh, so usually when I know a performance and what, uh, what, what it is that we're like the theme, the theme we're doing. And um, so I try and portray that theme on what I'm wearing, but I still do it my style <laughs> like mm-hmm. yesterday um wearing the uh like the skull plaid <laughs> I was like I can't I can't do just plain plaid because that's just not who I am but I want to exclude you know confidence or a lot of my mm-hmm. style actually with flow I, I I got told this a lot and I noticed it finally was I perceive a very sensual energy when I flow mm-hmm. um And so I always try and give that off. And one way I do that is because you can't really wear a whole lot and you kind of can't, I can't wear accessories because I do, Mm -hmm. or like necklaces because I do a lot of those neck tricks and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, 
so I, I have to do it based off like my face, my hair. Um, mm -hmm. and when I do, uh, my makeup, a lot of the times, like yesterday I was very, um, I put on a lot of gold because mm -hmm. the purpose of the show was, you know, to raise money for, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the tornado victims. And so I put gold on to try and like, you know, give out that energy of money, money, mm -hmm. money. Um, because we wanted to raise for them and, mm -hmm. you know, to help. And that's what I, one implications of how I do it is I, I give off, you know, colors and what I'm doing, but I also, um, you know, depends on what the show is, what kind of flow style I try and, um, give off. Mm -hmm. And so I do that with the tricks I do. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, yesterday, um, cause you know, the saying of, you know, sex sells. <laughs> um, so, and since we were trying to raise money, I, mm -hmm. I know what I, what I looked like. Um, mm -hmm. I always wear the push up bra and, mm -hmm. you know, I got boobs for days. And, um, <laughs> so I was like, Hey money, come on, help us out. Here. Right. And, um, <clears throat> so I do it based on the purpose of the show and I do it based with like my face. Um, I set intentions in my makeup. I'll even draw sigils mm -hmm. in my makeup as well. Um, you know, in my foundation and, um, and then, you know, blend it out and blend it to my skin. Oh, cool. Um, and, uh, and the, so I'd, I'll do it those ways because I can't, you can't really do a whole lot whenever you're doing fire because it's mm -hmm. a lot, <laughs> but I still want to give that energy off and that perception off of whatever the purpose or the theme of the show is. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we have, uh, well, no, I'm not doing that one, but, you know, Jackie asked me a little while ago about, like, um, accessories for, uh, they're doing a luau mm -hmm. uh, for Wildfire Productions, um, one of our gigs, and uh, her and Alex, and she asked me, she's like, okay, what kind of accessories should I wear? I was like, well, with a luau kind of theme, um... I would say like more bronzy and golds mm -hmm. because that goes with, you know, the kind of like the flow of more floral mm -hmm. Hawaiian vibe mm -hmm. kind of things is more bronzy and gold because it's mm -hmm. sunny and bright, mm -hmm. um, you know, or yellow even, mm -hmm. um, you know, you want to give that perception of what you're portraying, mm -hmm. you know, you're putting on, character for uh, the fire performance so you mm -hmm. add on those like little details the little details are really nice because it gives off more mm -hmm. um you know you put on those gold loops earrings mm -hmm. and it kind of like adds to the feel of what you want as a whole yeah right yeah that's cool <laughs> <laughs> well i think we are starting to get to a close here um we do ask all of our guests and we saved it for very last uh what are your magical aspirations cheyenne um so i want to help others and bring beauty to people in the aspects of their lives like promoting their self-love and bringing it from what I see on the inside of them to the outside. And, mm -hmm. you know, I do that with, you know, what my talents and my skills and giving back to everyone to help them feel just as beautiful as they are. You know, that's awesome. <laughs> that's really, really beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Well, we're going to go ahead and sign off here. Many thanks to <laughs> Cheyenne for joining us today on our awesome talk about glamour magic. Yes. Thank you very much. This is Reverend Raven. Thank and you, I'm Annalisa. Annalisa, for joining us. And we miss you, Adriana. We do. <laughs> <laughs> and stay magical, everyone. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Magical Aspirations. Be sure to like and follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Magical Aspirations to keep up with the latest and the greatest from Annalisa, Adriana, and Reverend Raven. And to join in on the Magical Aspirations conversations. 
Come check out our website, MagicalAspirations.com, to find bonuses from our guests, our Magical Aspirations blog, and to reach out to our magical hosts with questions, comments, reviews, or ideas for future episodes. We are so grateful for each and every one of you listening. Thank you again, and as always, stay true to your magic. <laughs>